This is just a note. This is not a full video about the, the topic. So the black guy that got shot who ran, ran because he thought it was about paying child support. Let that sink in for a second. Our country is screwed if men are being shot dead over child support. Judge Judy said this is due to judges handing children over to women when there is a standing law. It's supposed to be joint custody first and only if the judge finds a pressing reason, a dangerous reason, the mother or the father shouldn't have custody with evidence, with proof, with an, a full investigation of the supposed danger, then you award custody to one parent and the woman isn't always assumed to be the one to take the child. If judges wouldn't be handing out single custody, which is terrible for all children, boys and girls, we wouldn't even have a child support policy at all. So who is behind the curtain making judges give single custody over to women. I'll give you one guess. Leave your guess below. Thank you for watching the Shikama Live Show with your host, Shikama. So I'm going to make a really brief video. This is in response to the video that I made previously talking about Judge Judy saying that the de facto child custody law is that both parents are supposed to have custody because they are both parents. And instead, these judges are awarding custody to the mother. Now, I asked a question, why is that? And here is the succinct answer. And I said, who is behind this? Who's behind it? Divorce lawyers, period. Not feminists, not anybody else. You know, the feminists might be thinking that they want something, but really they're just retarded. There, there is nothing I can say bad enough to convey just how despic despicable this third wave feminism movement is it's disgusting it is beyond every thinking human should denounce third wave feminism why because at the end of the road of third wave femi feminism is the destruction degradation and depopulation of all humanity there is no bad word bad enough to even convey just how horrible these women quote unquote are and men now as far as child custody the people behind it are divorce lawyers case in point i listen to an actual divorce lawyer radio show they have an entire show dedicated just to divorce and they said point blank it makes absolutely no business sense to side with men why because it's the men who have the money and so they want to extract the money from the men so not only do they get the uh, uh, child custody but they also ask for the man to pay for the wife's divorce attorney how ridiculous is that women have no money women have no power the lawyer is trying to get all the money that he can out of the husband. Point blank. Just, I mean, just blatant as it, as it possibly can be. That's what's going on. These idiot women, oh, I'm going to divorce my husband because he left the, the, the seat up on the toilet bowl. I'm going to divorce my husband because he presses the toothpaste in the middle of the tube. He's gone all the time, and I'm sitting here in this half a million dollar house, all by myself, all lonely. Why don't you get your dog, 
or a cat and move on with your life. You married for a reason. If you don't understand what marriage is, and I'm sure this whole homosexual thing is, is not going to uh, clue you in any further, right? It's going to probably confuse you even more. Let, let's talk, let's talk Turkey here. When a woman sees homosexuals talking about getting, and, and it's not gay guys. Let's put that to rest. It's women. The people at the forefront of this whole gay thing about getting married are women, lesbians. That's who's most vocal. That's who brings the lawsuits. That's who goes to the Supreme Court. Lesbians. It's not gay guys. I've interviewed gay guys. They could care less. And, and then the ones who say they do support it, I say, are, are you in a relationship? No. Have you been in a re No. Has anybody asked you to marry you? No. Why are you supporting? Uh, uh, because I'm gay. That's just like voting for Hillary Clinton because she has a vagina. What do I mean by that? You have no dog in the fight. Just because you're a woman doesn't mean you're supposed to vote for Hillary. Just because you're gay doesn't mean you're supposed to support gay marriage. If you have absolutely no intention of getting married, you're just doing something. They have collected you into a group, targeted you, and said, bam, there you go. So now the woman sits at home, lonely, but she's sitting in a half a million dollar house. And Vogue and Cosmo says your man should be there uh, rubbing your feet and rubbing your belly and giving you a back massage every night because that's a real man. What? No, a real man puts food on the table. A real man has a penis. A real man has a chest. That's what a real man is. He doesn't have a vagina and he doesn't have breasts. That's a real man. There's a definition. And the man is concentrating on providing for his family. That's what a real man concentrates on. Why? Because it's ingrained. And a real man does stuff with his hands, like build a shed, uh, fix the roof. You know, I always, I always said that I'm not the most manless man or whatever, what have you, right? And I'm sure you could see by the way I talk and how I act that, you know, I'm more a sophisticated guy, right? That's, that's the terminology for it. But I've been building a couple of things and the more I build a couple of things, the more I don't want to do research and do videos and do editing and I want to go build stuff. It's ingrained in me somehow. I mean, it's just, you know, once you unlock that door, it's, just, it's open, it's wide open and you just want to go rush through it all the time over and over and over and over and over. I guarantee you if, if you have a feminine boy as a son, Go, go start building stuff with him so he doesn't he just completely like completely gets into that trust me that's why men are chefs the 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 most chefs world-renowned chefs excellent at it carpenters plumbers clothing designers men do it better than any woman and they keep saying oh women are women are. i just saw I, I saw a horrible a horrible uh commercial what was the commercial f about heart disease but it was supported by now which is the women's group and it was a black woman and they made sure she was black she wasn't uh what was the what's the the woman on msnbc light skin and uh, looks white even though she has braids the, the braids look terrible because she's so light skinned you you can't even tell she's black anyway this woman was black on the commercial black like my color black and she's like w women can do anything and then they had it was very subtle. If you didn't, if you didn't get the references, you wouldn't understand it whatsoever. So, so she's going through time in America. So during World War II, she's got her little red do rag on and her overalls, and she's riveting uh, the fuselage of an airplane. And then it that goes to the 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 uh, the sixties, and then it goes through the seventies, and and she's screaming and yelling at some sort of rally. And while I'm sure there were women that did that, for the most part, it was all of that stuff was run by men. And she's women can do anything. And she's in a boardroom. And then uh, and they kept moving the scenarios by lifting the floor up and going in sort of like an elevator like thing. But and in the last one where she's in the boardroom, they lift the elevator up and she falls to the ground dead. And it says heart disease affects women uh, donate to make sure you pay for pay for women. You know, a, a lot of that stuff. I just, I just, I just say, do people, are people really that stupid? Donate to, you know, who donates to stuff like that? And you know, who? are we talking about research? They're just saying donate, nothing specific. Just donate. Just give us money because vagina. And that's the point of this whole divorce child custody thing. Vagina. Women have no money. Let's not talk about equal pay, or let's talk about equal pay. 
women don't have money, women aren't paid as much because women don't work. They took all men and all women and compared the incomes. That means they took all women, including housewives, and gave them a zero. They didn't even give them an equivalent, right? Because ostensibly, the husband pays for the wife anyway, right? That's why she's a housewife. He can cover himself, and he can cover her, and he can cover everybody else in the house. Which leads me to another video that I'm going to do about quit trying to fight your husband. Quit trying to fight the man of the house about money. I'm going to do a whole series about money and household income and revenue and all that sort of stuff. But the lawyers came out point blank and said, woman, you have no money. You, you don't even interest us. And we're not interested in in joint custody. We are going to go for sole custody every time because we get paid a percentage of everything that's decided. Not just billable hours. We get paid in a, in a contingency fee on everything. And we are going to ask the court to judge against the husband in a divorce so he can pay us two, double, I mean, double, triple, quadruple, everything. I mean, it's just, it's just ridiculous. And what's funny is the woman doesn't get insulted. Oh, well, I got my money. She doesn't go, you know what? This whole divorce thing is terrible. How did it, first of all, how did I even get to the stage where I'm sitting in court having a divorce? This is the man of my dreams. I had ch five children by him. I live in a half million dollars. She never stops and s says that. She just goes, oh, I got half of every, more than half, way more than half, way more than half. Destroying, not destroying the man, destroying capital, uh, t destroying businesses. How ridiculous is that? Destroying businesses to the point where uh, now 25 people are affected by your pet peeve about the dead toilet seat. I already said it in the video. I said, if, 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 if it bothers you that much, why don't you save a few hundred dollars and get you an automatic toilet seat toilet where the toilet completely shuts, closes, the lids completely close every time you get up from the toilet, every time you, you use the toilet, everything you have to open it up. And then when you leave, it completely shuts, closes. If it bothers you that much, if you're too lazy to, to clean your own house, go hire a maid. In fact, I think if the woman went through all the things that gave her a pet peeve and she had to pay for it, it would become clear just how stupid she is and just how lazy she is. I don't want to clean this. I need to pay for somebody to clean my house. Okay. When you have to pay for that out of your own money and he, and here's the, here's the kicker. The income that pays the expenses in the home are, is from the man's income. The woman's income, she can buy herself. I, I, I talked to a, a bus driver, lady bus driver, and she said, I'm not working because I have to drive a bus that I can't make it. My husband covers all of that. I'm working because I want to buy me an Escalade. Really? You're working. You go through all of this stuff. You're over 60 years old. You go through all of this so you can buy you an Escalade. You probably live in a mediocre house to begin with. So inefficient with money. Black. Black lady, of course. I'm working so I can buy... I mean, just just the, the juvenile concept of how money works. And I can't convey to the women that... Your divorce, whatever you think that you need to do, that you have to, is so important that you have to have a divorce from your husband of 5, 10, 30 years, 30, you've been married 30 years and you're getting a divorce. You're stupid. You're retarded. You're, there is, there is nothing. And uh, you can't be, it can't be that he's beating you. It cannot be. And they just came out with stats that 40% of all domestic violence is committed against men. They said it on the mainstream media because Debbie Washerman Schultz came out and started talking about uh, uh, you, you should be able to abort a child two hours before it's born naturally. These are your Democrats. And she said that all Democrats believe that. And if not, they're not a Democrat. And, and look at black people just going, uh, just be just like cattle led to slaughter. Oh yeah, I'm a Democrat. <laughs> But, but the, the man's income goes to pay all the expenses in the house. And I can't convey to women that there is nothing that important. Oh, well, we've just grown apart. We don't talk anymore. Well, then talk. Stop being a stupid cow and talk. What do you want? Do you want a girlfriend or do you want a husband? If you're, if you're clueless, 
that men don't sit around and talk about their feelings. All of my arguments last about 15 seconds. The person says something, Henri, and then, was that an English word? I don't know. Is that a, I don't know. Sorry, I, I speak five languages. The person says something that they're annoyed about, and then I respond, and if the person didn't say, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> then I walk off and that's the end of the argument there's there's no well I feel I was really hurt by your what you know I tell my roommate all the time oh that would hurt me if I had feelings mm. but if you're you can't be this clueless about men men are not gonna open up and talk about their feelings you don't want that trust me ladies you don't want that if you find a man who really opens up about his feeling that's you have a girlfriend that's a girlfriend that's a feminized man that's no longer a man and if you want to change your husband into a girlfriend, you need to wake up and recognize what you're trying to do. And that Cosmo and Vogue telling you that that's the man that you want, that's why people get divorced. Well, he's changed so much. Yeah, you turned him into a, a woman. If I were a different person, I'd say a different word there. You changed him to a girl. He loved you so much that he went from this old house type of guy, the guy with the... Uh, red plaid shirts and overalls into who's who's the guy on CNN the, the gay guy on CNN that's who you changed your man from a man's man to a really man's man <laughs> if you get my drift and then and then you're gonna go divorce him and he's wondering what the hell happened because T Cosmo has every issue every issue how to change your man how to change your man if you don't like your man, why are you with him? Well, it's not that I don't like him. I just, there's just things about, then you don't like him. And, and when you try and take a man's personality into your own hands, you're going to end up with this disaster. Then you're going to go out and cheat with the very guy that you say you don't like. The womanizer, the bad boy, the guy that curses you out, the guy that slaps you around. Because that's what you want. That's what you really want. And let's get some psychology onto this. Why are you divorcing your, your husband? Because you have turned him into a little gay boy. Let's be honest. And now the sharks are circling you and your family that you have built, right? The man has has said upon himself that I'm going to I'm going to support my wife and children. I'm going to support my wife and children. I'm going to support my wife and children. Now you've turned him into a little gay boy that you don't like, that you don't want, that you never wanted, but you were so convinced by Cosmo and Vogue and and L and Woman's Day that you thought that you needed to to change him and you do your little passive aggressive thing. You know, honey, I really don't like when you sit at dinner and you don't talk to me. Wait, I just got off of a 12 hour shift. Shut the hell up and be happy that I'm eating your horrible food that you don't know how to cook. I'm being I'm being the conscious, the subconscious of the man, what he should be telling you. And you'd probably like that. Some real honesty. Shut the hell up. Get out. Get out of here. Let me eat alone if you're going to nag me because you are going to work me into an early grave because you're nagging. Because you've been reading some stupid magazine, watching some stupid show. Honey, why aren't you loving and caring like that? Because that guy's gay. He has absolutely no use for your vagina. He wants to be pretty. He wants pretty things around him. And he wants to act pretty in front of you. And then when he walks away, gets around the corner and gets with his other gay friends, he goes, oh, she has a smelly cooch. I could not believe I was hanging out with her. I mean, let's just be honest. And you're trying to change your man. And then you say, oh, he's changed. Let's get a divorced. And then the lawyers are licking their lips, literally licking their lips. Even the lawyer on the side of the man, because he's not going to push for joint custody. Why? Because he is not going to rock the vote, the boat. They're all in on it. The judge, the lawyer for the husband, the lawyer for the wife the team for the wife right and then the lawyer says you know you should just really go along with what whatever she says let's just not argue and draw this out you should just go with it bad advice horrible advice lawyers are supposed to have a fiduciary responsibility to you that means that they are supposed to look out for your best interest and they do not that means that all of these innocent guys going to, to jail, they have a lawyer not looking out for the best interests of these innocent guys, are they? They're not saying, judge, I need forensic 
evidence, actual physical evidence. No body was found. And then the person comes up 10 years later. That has happened. <laughs> they had a bad lawyer, right? The lawyers are all in it, in it together. And these stupid feminists then claim victory. Oh, see, the woman is the most nurturing. No, she's not. Absolutely not. I have a video on here that the NFL and the uh, MLB tried to sue me over showing men holding their children and catching baseballs and, and footballs and diving and diving for, for to save their children. That's how a man takes care of a child. He actually takes care of a child. He doesn't sit there and hold his hand or hold her hand. He lets the child grow up, first of all. I just watched a, a, a multi-millionaire worth $200 million, $300, $400 million, $800 million maybe, say that he taught his children how to swim, didn't put a fence around it, around the pool. Day two, he's putting his baby into the water, teaching the, the kid how to swim. And there's an entire league of people that do that, that teach infants how to swim. They say the infant is has been in water for nine months. He's, he's, he's accustomed to water. He's not actually accustomed to dry land. And we're just building on that instinct. A man doesn't nurture a child. A man lets a child grow. And that's the whole point of passing on good genes, blah, blah, blah. You know, a man teaches a child by example. Sure, the old, old, older the man gets, then he just dispenses wisdom simply because he can't go out and throw the ball, the baseball with the child. Have you seen the men with the, the daughter and uh, and they play catch because he wants a boy? That's what a man does. Now, if you know of a woman who's going through a divorce right now, I want you to show her this video. And I want you to ask her, because you're a good friend, right? Is there anything earth shattering that happened in the marriage that led you to divorce? Or, and be honest, did you simply read Cosmo? or watch MTV, or watch CNN, or MSNBC, or NBC, ABC, CBS, and get some full notion in your head that your husband is supposed to act a certain way. Instead of your husband is supposed to act the exact way that he's been acting for 30 years, 20 years, 50 years, and you're trying to change something when in fact you were attracted to the very thing that you're trying to change. I do not believe in divorce at all. And I think there is no reason to get a divorce outside of a wife beating a man or a man beating a, a, a woman outside of that. Now, I used to be of the notion infidelity was an automatic divorce, but infidelity uh, might, be, might be simply be a shortcoming of the person to begin with or I'm not doing my job physically to the woman, or the woman isn't doing her job physically to the husband. That's why people cheat. They don't cheat because they love you so dearly that they just had to go and get some vagina from somebody else. Those two are not congruent. They can't love you so dearly and yet go seek loving from somebody else. They had a woman who wrote an entire book about simply about that. Why do men cheat? And she surveyed the men and that's exactly what they said because she doesn't do anything. Ranging from we don't have sex at all and yet she wants to scream about infidelity. Well, if you're not having sex at all, you have absolutely no claim over his body. She's listened to some stupid feminist that says all sex is rape, which is, you have to sit down and think, who's saying this? It has to be a lesbian, has to be. Has to be a man-hating lesbian to even make that statement. There is no loving wife woman that's gonna make the statement that all sex is rape. No, no, it, the two cannot be the same, come from the same source. You can't have a loving wife with five children say all sex is rape. It has to be from some jilted, lesbian, man-hating woman, right? Anyway, the woman did the interviews and it ranged from she's not having sex at all with me all the way to we do have sex, but there's nothing there. She literally lies there like a cold. It literally feels like I'm having sex with a corpse, and that is icky. That's gross. And she can't claim infidelity if when in fact the real problem is she doesn't want to be married. And there's people who are like that. They get married, and then two years later they say, I just, I just don't want to be married. 
not just to you i don't want to be married at all even then that's that's some juvenile crap and when you get down to the problem when you, you get down to the analysis the psychological analysis of that situation they don't want to be an adult and when i say they don't want to be an adult they want there's no aspect of adulthood that they like at all not even the freedom of going out and buying whatever the hell you want to when you want to which a child can't do right they don't want to be an adult it's not that they don't want to be married they don't want to be an adult that's some psychological insanity buried deep down in that person then when you cure that that they can accept being an adult period then the marriage is fine so when you encounter those women just take them to a psychiatrist and, and fix that fix them right up give them some uh, adderall or whatever and fix them right up some ambient let them walk around the house make sure you have a one-story house so they don't fall off a cliff or nothing and they'll be good as rain good, good right as rain good as gold anyway so the short answer is <laughs> that it's the 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 divorce lawyers that are behind not just divorce but the child custody and way why the child custody is going to the woman the woman thinks that she's getting some she's not getting something you're destroying wealth. Everything with me is about wealth. The wealth of the family. The wealth of the family. The wealth of the family. When you get child, sole custody of the children, that not just that that doesn't not just destroys the wealth. It destroys the entire legacy of the family. It's destruction. It's not good for the children. The children are now going to have going to grow up with a complex, a complete complex. You cannot. Raise a child by yourself. I don't care how good you are. I know these women are going to be defensive, but I'm, I'm the man and the... No, you're not. You have a vagina. You don't have a penis. You actually need a penis to be the counterpart to the vagina. That's why the African religions were the way that they were, because they observed that men and women are different, and together they make a whole. There was no single God for Africans. They were two gods, always two gods, two gods, two gods, two gods, two gods, two gods. male and female yin and yang the asians got that from the africans it wasn't the uh, opposite way around i don't care how much of a loving woman you are you are a woman and you need to be adult and admit that you do not have a penis that's the admission that's the t complete admission you're right i don't have a penis i cannot raise a girl right without a penis I cannot raise a boy without a penis. So I have to go and get somebody with a penis who probably is the father of them and have him help me raise each other. So why are you getting a divorce? <laughs> it comes full circle, right? You're destroying wealth. You're destroying wealth. You're destroying legacy. It's just destruction, destruction, destruction. And the lawyers don't care. You know, the lawyers have five children at home and a loving wife. They could care less. And they are doing divorce coming out of their nose and they're just making killing and, yeah, I, I, and I recommend that you get soul custody and, I, and we're gonna ask for all of the billable hours to be charged to your husband too oh yes it's gonna be a great day and you're, you're gonna win lady you're gonna win yay you get half his his money so now the, the wealth is completely destroyed because half doesn't actually mean half at the end of the day, when they calculate it, let's say you had a hundred million dollars. At the end of the day, you don't end up with 50 million, 50 million. You end up with 20 million, 20 million. Well, how do you end up with that? Because that's all the fees and all of this and all of this percentage and all. You remember lawyers can take up to a third of some, some, some lawyers can take up to a third of what you get, right? Now he's saying, and I, and I want the third of the other guy too. So not only do I want my third that I'm charging, I want the third of the other guy too. So that means two thirds are being taken out of the nest egg. And you thought you won. Well, don't you love me? You would pay half of me, wouldn't? No, no, no. That, that's, you're not gonna get half. You're gonna get chump change. And at the end of the day, your 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 family is gonna be, end up in ruins because no longer you don't have a family. Do you see what I'm saying? Maybe somebody can write an outline of all of this in the in the in their comment you don't end up with half and nobody ends up with half not even the man nobody ends up with a half and with child custody you don't even end up with a third you people are fools doing this complete fool and, and the women's are we won and the feminists are saying we won you don't have anything to do with it feminist it's it's a divorce between that woman and that man you have nothing to do with it. Nothing. If she's fool enough to say, oh, well, I'm going to get a divorce because all, all sex is rape. And you end up with not even a third. And if it's about money, you're not, you're, you're not fit to live, really.
in my in my estimation because first of all you don't even know the concept of money wealth the family is the wealth is not just the wealth of actually money two people working together to create a legacy it's not just that it's also the wealth of the nation and that's what africans understood it's the wealth of the nation the family and it's supposed to be black people that you grow up become an adult get married and offer something of value to the rest of the people what is that by opening up a business of your own there's a need for businesses always everybody needs a business right do you make your own clothes do you grow your own food do you cook your own food how about that one do you wash your own dishes do you have dishes do you make your own dishes do you make your own dishwasher washer do you make your own furniture do you make your own house do you buy and sell your own house do you buy and sell your own land do you build your own walls all of these comes from other people who made stuff and that's what you're supposed to do you're supposed to grow up become an adult start a business of some sort that, that somebody needs somewhere that you like doing don't become a butcher if you hate the sight of blood don't become a carpenter if you're you were you were two thumbs and you freaking hit, hit your hit your thumb uh, hit your fingers with a hammer all the time yeah don't do that do something else do something that you love divorce destroys not just the family but the nation a and i and i'm talking about it destroys 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 i mean like three levels deep it destroys a family well i just couldn't stand him why because you have bad expectations unrealistic expectations you've read something somewhere that somebody told you or even your mom or even worse you had an idea of what how your the wealth of the family is supposed to be in 2008 hit and you didn't understand that that was it's, that's supposed to happen it's business is cyclical it goes through ups and downs ups and downs ups and downs and then all these people get divorced said in 2008 oh well well he lost all our money and he can't find a job what a shiftless negro no it's a business cycle if you're an adult and you understood money you would understand that you're gonna have a business cycle and it's supposed to be that we're supposed to go up into a boom but we never did what we're supposed we never had the actual depression which means it, it built up and then it built down well we didn't go down we were heading down and then the federal reserve said no we're not going to go down infuse money infuse money infuse money so then all of the business level people never felt the down which means we have stores still open today that are not supposed to be open now I, I told you in the last thing that we have all of these firms closing closing 200 stores 300 400 stores laying off that many people thousands of people these are people that should have closed in 2007 2008 why because that's not what the economy needed at that time anyway why is radio shack closing so many stores because people don't no longer make their own electronic things radio shack its main business is to sell electronic gadgets and parts for you to create and construct your own electrical engineering things or, or component things yes it has headphones yes it has cell phones yes it has cameras but that's not what it they actually cater to people who make their own headphones who make their own cameras who make their own uh, cell phones and calculators nobody does that people are stupid now right i used to I, I used to literally jizz on myself going into radio shack because i could come out and i could go home and make all sorts of crazy crappy computer stuff loved it loved it i thought it was the best store ever now not so much it's a destruction of wealth we never had our down time you remember they said oh well now we're in information-based economy we're no longer manufacturing economy which is stupid because even in an information economy you still need to manufacture crap if you're going to open up a call center you still need the little office pods the desk the furniture the the phones the phone connectors you need all of that crap all of that stuff has to be manufactured at the base of any economy has to be manufacturing sugar the sugar on your dinner table or in your cupboard or wherever you put your sugar isn't sugar somebody has to refine the sugar all of that is at the base core and they're talking about minimum wage no we don't we wouldn't have a minimum wage issue if we still had our manufacturing base all of the quote-unquote poor people would be working in the factories then the middle people would be creating all these other businesses they don't have to make their own tables they can go to the factory and buy the table right we never 
had a real shift, which means all of these information places would close and we would go down back down to manufacturing because that's where it's at the world is still brand new a lot of economies are still you know emerging markets you hear this emerging markets these are people who don't have sophisticated markets we could be manufacturing and selling to all of those people anyway that was a short answer it's the lawyers who were behind the entire and, 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 and i tried to make it as less complicated than it really is it's very complicated the lawyers get all the money they destroy your family and get all the money and the base reason that you're getting divorced isn't even a reason in my book right i would deny eat every divorce or are you just a whore and you want to have somebody else's penis maybe you can have an open marriage right if he's going off sending back hundreds of thousands of dollars and you're sitting in this mansion but he's away all the time maybe you can have you know, have the pool boy come back. You can have your fill, and then when he get, comes home, you can be a loving wife then. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Come on, Jim. A man by the name of uh, Frank Hatley has been in jail in South Georgia for the past year because he hasn't been paying child support, right? Well, it turns out that the boy that he's not paying child support to isn't even his own biological son. And prosecutors knew that before throwing him in jail. So when uh, did his girlfriend get pregnant? His girlfriend got pregnant in 1980. Mm -hmm. Okay, He thought it was his son, so uh, he was paying child support, everything, right? And then uh, in the year 2000, uh, they had a DNA test which indicated that the boy was not his. Was mm -hmm. not his. So uh, what they ended up doing is uh, they had him pay child support anyway. So he was still paying child support. At what point he lost his job and he became homeless. And he couldn't even pay child support. Like, he couldn't even pay for a, a place to live or food to eat. But he still tried to make child support payments from his unemployment checks. Now, that's after uh, he already found out it's not even his kid? Yes, this is after he found out it's not his kid. How unbelievable is the story? They still made him pay this child support. And then finally, he just couldn't do it anymore. He had no money. He was out on the streets. And they're like, you know what? You're not paying, so we're going to throw you in jail. He's been in jail for the past year. Past year. Now, when you, we do these stories of people who are in jail in America, like, it's just, you know, you do s some guys who are not in jail, and you can't believe why they're not in jail. And then you do stories of some people that are in jail, and you're like, what the hell are we doing? Why are we putting people like this in jail? I mean, imagine for a second. You have sex with this lady, right? And she says, oh, yeah, yeah, this is your, oh, I got pregnant from you. It turns out the whore had slept with someone else, okay, and gotten pregnant by them. She lied to you for all of these years, and you paid child support for a kid who wasn't yours all those years, even though you broke up with a girl so long ago. You're not even with her anymore. She's not your wife. She's not anything, right? And then you find out the kid isn't yours, and you continue to make payments, but since you didn't make enough payments, they arrest you and put you in jail. By the way, James... I, I my mind can't comprehend the injustice of that. Uh, as if the first DNA test wasn't enough, they had another DNA test uh, done recently to prove, finally, again, that this is not his child. But he's still in jail. I mean, he's waiting for a court date so they can uh, relieve him of his duties to pay this child support because he's still required to, uh, he's still required to pay $250 now, a month. Now, I'm going to say something that you think is not going to be logically connected, but uh, let me explain, okay? This is why I'm against the death penalty. Okay, so you say, what the hell does that have to do with this? Here's why. Because look at the sum of a bitch prosecutor and, and judge in this case. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I'm that prosecutor, no way I bring that case. He, he knows. He knows he's not the dad. He knows the guy is homeless. He knows that he already made thousands of dollars in payments and did the best he could. And he puts that guy in jail. He, the judge listens to the case and goes, oh, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Send his ass to jail. Now, you tell me those guys wouldn't hang someone uh, on a shred of evidence, okay? Now, I, I know I'm stretching it, but there's no way in the world I would trust them with someone's life or death. And there are prosecutors and judges like that throughout the country. So we can make some mistakes. But I, we can't make the ultimate mistake with somebody's life when you got prosecutors and judges like this running around. And with human beings, what they are, they, you always have these kind of vindictive assholes. So, no, can't have it. JR. This is one of those cases where it, once he gets a chance to get out or whatever's going to happen to him, he gets vindicated for his positions. That, you know, these are the times when you come up with an extreme lawsuit and you say, I want $10 million because you ruined my life. 
You know, these are those situations when it should come that way. We talked about it before when he said, oh, maybe you can just take, like, I forget what the case was. And we said, oh, would you take 15000 Because that guy got hit by the bike. That's what it was. Right. This is one of the things. He ru- they ruined his life. Yeah. And completely and utterly wrong, knowingly wrong. That's when he should get about $10 million. Let's right. go ahead and go there. Yeah, no, look, I hear you on that, and that's an excellent case to be made, right? And I would hear that one out, no question about it. Now, uh, the amazing thing is, not only are we nowhere near that, the guy is still in jail. They haven't even let him out yet. Madness. By the way, the kid was born in the 80s, you know, when we said 1980. Uh, in 1987, he was born. So when in 2000, they do the first paternity test, he's 13, right? So, and that's why the the payments continue. Even once he gets past 18, they're like, well, you still owe the back payments. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. Hi, my name is Larry Rattan. If you give me six minutes, I'm going to prove to you and legislators that divorce laws have little or no meaning. Legislators work very hard to give us fair laws, but they have been tricked into including some detrimental language. You think the law tells the judges to evaluate each person, what they have contributed, then make an equitable separation to, of the marriage. You will plainly see how these so-called laws can easily be ignored. The results have been a goldmine for the justice system and a disaster for divorcing couples. This is not a male and female issue. Many women pay alimony to their exes until they die. Some of those exes work very little or not at all to support themselves. To eliminate the gender aspect, I'm going to use worker for the income provider and ex for the secondary or non-provider. I'm going to show you an actual case. Then I'm going to explain how and why I think the grossly lopsided decisions happen. This is not about one case. This is one example of how thousands have been unfairly victimized by the justice system. At trial, this case revealed the following facts about the ex and the worker. The ex admitted in court that they had an affair, then asked for a divorce. They said their spouse was good. They secretly took money from a marital account for their private accounts. They collected unemployment for being fired. Later, they said they were not fired. And then they said they didn't need to help with the family business because they were employees. Discovered in court about the worker was that the worker was declared absolutely honest by the neutral forensic CPA. The worker asked the ex to help with the family business. The worker provided overwhelming evidence that they were the driving force of the family's success. And the worker helped raise the ex's child from a previous marriage. That's a pretty good accurate snapshot of the people involved in this divorce. Now, here's what the judge ruled was a fair settlement. The judge said the ex will get the beach home and the worker will pay both mortgages and current taxes. Number two is very important. The ex can work a part-time minimum wage job that is lower than the lowest level set by the vocational evaluator and far below the $33,000 job possibility. The worker will pay the ex $1,800 a month alimony for the rest of their life. Continuing on, number four, the judge said the ex will be freed from all marital debt. The worker will pay all $1,115,000 in debt and $728,000 in interest. It'll take 30 years to pay this off. Number five and six is very important. Number five, the worker will pay the ex $240,000 cash settlement instead of $91,000. The lower amount would share the workload and bills. The judge ruled that the ex needed $240,000 with no bills or work. The worker asked to pay on $240,000 instead of alimony. The judge said no, the ex needed $240,000 and alimony. Continuing on, number seven, the, the judge ruled that the worker will get the family boat, but the ex had the boat seized and sold at auction to pay on the $240,000. The ex got the boat at a bargain price. The worker will get two businesses, but one business was forced to be sold and pay on the $240,000. The worker got the beach triplex that was 200% underwater, and the worker got a home near work that was 100% financed. 
anyone can see that this is a very lopsided decision. The ex is given a life of luxury. The worker is forced into overwhelming debt, work, and pays alimony until they die. This is how the law gets twisted. This is the divorce law 6108 concerning alimony. If you look at the law, it looks very fair and equitable to both sides. But if you look closely, you're going to see a lot of little words like may, can, and consider. Here are some of those words that I've highlighted. I call these qualifier, qualifiers because they actually cancel out the words that follow. Those are the words orange highlighted in this page, right, that actually mean nothing. In other words, the judge may or may not follow the law. People use, soon find out that they are dealing with the judge's whim not the law. Why some judges produce lopsided settlements might have something to do with money. M most people don't realize that lawyers can give money directly to judges. They call it a campaign donation. A big donation will affect the person's decisions. Judges are not saints. They're lawyers in robes. Money might explain another odd aspect about divorces. Some divorces last five or six years, while murder trials last two or three months. Murder trials are complicated. A divorce is basically cutting a pie in half. Do lawyers and judges intentionally drag out trials to produce big profits? Let's follow the money. Divorcing couples have to pay lawyers, and lawyers give money to judges. And then not only that, but these two particular lawyers, but you'll find out that there's a whole squadron of lawyers that pay money to judges. So it's not in the interest of any of these judges, or this lawyer, or this, excuse me, lawyers and judges to stop a case early, to finish early. They have every reason to want to make a case last as long as they possibly can. And sooner or later, what's going to happen is the judge says, well, I'm overwhelmed. My caseload is just overwhelmed. So I'm going to need some more judges to help me with this. And along with more judges comes some more secretaries, court reporters, and they got to have some uh, sheriffs to protect them from all these decisions that they, they make. All of this because these two entities are allowed to just take their time at trial. Judges and lawyers have no incentive to wrap up a case. They do have every incentive to keep a case going as long as they can. The last why for lopsided decisions might be because they start a whisper campaign. A 30-year study from Brown University proved this to be 74% successful. The lucky person with the big settlement tells all their friends, neighbors, and possibly your spouse how great a divorce is. The judge allows them to sit around with little or no responsibilities and collect alimony from their exes until they die. This is a walking, talking advertisement that unknowingly spreads the great benefits of a divorce. I hope legislators can see that the current system is seriously broken. Please do not allow the judicial branch to tell you what you can and cannot do. They are experts at twisting your words into profits for themselves. You make the rules. Every time you give up your power, you make your job less important. Please do not vote yourself out of existence. Thank you very much. Okay, I understand that you uh, were involved or had a situation involving the collection of child support from yourself. Can you t tell me about, uh, about this? Okay, well, uh, it would be about uh, four or five years ago. I was uh, actually working at a decent job. I was working at one of the call centers in our town. Uh, I was making about twenty twenty five thousand 25000 a year. Uh, my ex-girlfriend, uh, mother of my daughter, uh, her boyfriend, uh, pushed her into contacting Ontario Works and trying to nab me for extra child support. I didn't really have a problem with paying the child support as long as it's set to a reasonable level and I still have something to live on. But uh, I got a commission check for one month and the worker that had been assigned from Ontario Works to look over this case 
uh, took it that that commission check would be added every single week, almost doubling my income, and brought me down to the courthouse uh, about six times over the course of the next few months, trying to get the child support raised up to a fifty thousand dollar a month income or a year income. Uh, I've been locked into the courthouse now at that twenty-five thousand dollar a year income, even though by going to court all that time I lost the job, and now I'm making about three hundred dollars a month with child support payments of seven hundred a month. So. It's been locked into the courts, and despite my best efforts, I haven't been able to get it changed. Although they said that there's a two-year review on that process, uh, I've been informed point-blank by uh, the lady in charge of Ontario Works that that would only be in a case where they will make money on the deal. If the amounts will drop, they don't bother. Are you in arrears at the present time? Uh, right now I'm about $10,000 in the hole. Has anyone, uh, has there been any attempt to take away your driver's license or your passport? Uh, considering I don't have either, it's going to be difficult. Do you ever get, have you ever had any uh, uh, threats or anything like that from any of the government agencies? Uh, well, the worker that I contacted uh, at Ontario Works um, told me flat out that I'd better make sure I get myself a couple of good jobs because she's locked it into the courts and that's what I have to pay. In your dealings with Ontario Works, did you ever get the sense that, uh, that they truly wanted to find uh, the correct amount of child support, or did you ever get the sense that they just wanted to go for whatever they could get? Um, primarily she just wanted to go for whatever she could get her hands on. Uh, I'm not trying to name names here, but I guess I have to. It was uh, Peggy Jo McKenzie. And uh, she's the one that dragged me down to the courthouse six times trying to prove to the courts, despite my pay stubs, that I was making ten times my amount. And uh, in the end, it worked out exactly the way I thought it would. Uh, I had a $22,000 income that year. My child support was set at about $1,000 a month. Um, and I lost the job that would have given me that. Now I'm on Ontario Works myself. And uh, despite all of my uh, requests for review of that decision, I've been told that uh, it stands unless I make more money. In your opinion, had uh, you not been forced into court by Ontario Works, do you feel that today you would not be Ontario Works yourself and maybe be gainfully employed? Oh, definitely. Uh, I had that job for almost three years and uh, they washed me out for failures to show from court dates. What, uh, do you have any uh, comments that you'd like to make about the Family Responsibility Office? Uh, very inhumane. Uh, they don't really care about your condition, your situation, your circumstance. They just want their cash, and it's, it's not helpful. They're, they're, they're not really... I'm trying to think of a good way to put this, but uh, they're, they're less than helpful. They don't live up to the promises that they've been making. Since, this, the, since uh, the Ontario Works people started to push you to try to get you to pay more child support, to get more money from you, at the end of this process, are they getting more money out of you or less money out of you? Uh, well, now they're getting less money because I've lost the job that was going to, to support the amount that they originally requested. I'd ask them to do it based off of my taxes. At the end of each year, I file a tax, a tax form. They can take that information, use it to readjust my child support levels so that they'd actually be accurate. 
They opted not to do that and instead locked it in at the $20,000, $25,000 I made in Sutherland. And uh, it's just been sitting in arrears since I lost that job because I just don't have that much money to put out. I get $300 a month from Ontario Works. I owe $700 a month in child support. Uh, I can't figure out how those two are ever going to meet. Uh, so as it stands right now, about uh, $10,000 to $12,000 in the whole thanks to that wonderful little arrangement with uh, no out and guarantee I have to pay it. Ulf Carlson has experienced firsthand just how much damage the collusion between lawyers and judges can cause. At the beginning of the divorce, and I had uh, um, talked to some of the biggest law firms here in Sacramento, and their first question was, who is the judge and who is the opposing attorney? And I was told by numerous firms that they had a very serious concern about that relationship. The attorney representing Ulf's wife had a close relationship with the judge and now even serves as both an attorney and a judge in the same courthouse. Not surprisingly, Ulf's judge seemed biased against him during his trial. Right during cross-examination, the judge just got up and left, and he never returned to the courtroom. My attorney, I think it was a couple days later, she gets called in uh, by his uh, clerk and basically is informed that the trial's over with. And the interesting thing is he actually ruled against me on every single issue, not 99%, but 100%. I mean, he nailed me on everything. He ordered both properties sold, that I were to pay my exes all of our attorney fees. So I was left with no other choice than to file an appeal. Filing an appeal is what someone does if they're trying to reverse a judge's decision. Unfortunately, the appeals court can only change a decision or order a retrial if the family court judge didn't apply the family code correctly. Aside from that, appeals courts don't have the power to change a judge's ruling, even if the judge's decisions were biased, one-sided, or cruel. Two days after I had filed my appeal, uh, McBrien found out about it and has admitted that he picked up the phone and called his buddy, who just happened to be chief of legal at the Department of General Services, where I'd worked for 18 years. And I had uh, an impeccable work history, and I was just escorted out of the building and fired. It became clear to Ulf that the judge was retaliating against him for filing an appeal. So Ulf submitted a complaint to the Judicial Council. This is where people can report unethical or incompetent judges. But the Judicial Council is made up of judges and lawyers, and they rarely remove a judge from office. In fact, that year there were over a thousand complaints filed against judges in the state of California alone. Of those thousand complaints, none of the judges were fined, none of the judges were put in jail, and none of the judges were removed from office. Even though the Judicial Council found that Ulf's judge engaged in willful misconduct and contacted Ulf's employer, they didn't fire him. And even though the appeals court and the Judicial Council acknowledged that the judge was in the wrong, Ulf's divorce still caused him to go completely broke. 
His mistake has cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I've not been reimbursed any of that money. But not fun at the age of 51 to start over. And all my other friends are talking about, you know, getting ready for retirement at, you know, 55 or so. And here I have to begin again. <laughs> so. Unfortunately, Ulf had no choice but to move back in with his parents who live in Scandinavia. It's another part of the world where divorce is done much differently. <laughs> 